साछे कोई न पतिजे झूठे जग पति आए गली गली गौरस फिरे मदिरा बैठी बिकाए so uh, with that let me go ahead and get started as the name suggests doha nomics right so it's a combination of uh, doha's by kabir and economics so that's how uh, doha nomics right and a very innovative way to bring forth uh, an approach as relates to uh, investments and as relates to how potentially you can not only look at managing your wealth investments etc but more in terms of it's more of a philosophy uh that's laid down and done in a very very innovative way and i'm very lucky to have uh, vinayak today along with us uh vinayak is also a very dear friend so let me start off so these are the two characters whose sort of uh, ethos is pretty much embedded as far as the book is concerned kabir and rahim and uh, both both of them uh, sort of were in 15th century and were known for their uh, uh, wisdom and maybe spending 30 seconds on each of them uh, as relates to kabir i don't know how many of you know uh, kabir was uh, kabir uh, was brought up in banaras he was a uh, weaver not economically well off and what he is known for is essentially his teachings and the couplets became very famous as dohas as uh, uh, sort of all of you would uh, potentially know and hear about so kabir had been sort of critical in terms of a lot of the uh, sort of uh, you know both from a religion standpoint be it hinduism be it uh, you know uh, muslim religion and essentially the words of wisdom that he left through the dohas right i think appealed to a large section of community as far as both hindus muslims and sikhs were concerned who sort of uh, inculcated and imbibed a lot of his teachings and a little bit of uh, rahim uh, essentially as far as rahim is concerned so rahim rahim's father was a courtier as far as uh, akbar was concerned and a lot of the wisdom that also uh, rahim left forth had a lot of followings but uh that's probably enough in terms of an introduction as far as kabir and rahim is concerned so that forms the foundational base as to what vinayak created as far as his book is concerned and which is very very sort of counterintuitive because what you would think what has spirituality to do with investments and economics and what not and that's where essentially he has tried to imbibe a lot of the learnings a little bit about uh vinayak he spent two decades in financial services and his goal and stated objective is to spend financial literacy and essentially which can lead to financial independence as far as uh, you know as far as all of us are concerned and he does it in a very simple way something that would resonate with you no complexity uh, no sort of usage of sort of you know uh, complex terms and uh, taxonomy so he does it in a very sim- simple way and which i asked him that uh, you use the word bhartiya right so did it come from this recent you know hype and hoopla about bharat right and he said uh, actually the prime minister stole it from him he had been using it for the last one year or so right so that's a that's a little bit of trivia as far as uh, and i fondly call him sapre his sort of surname uh, rather than calling him by by his first name so doha nomics it has uh, essentially uh, he has tried to boil it down into uh, you know some of the principles that he has laid down and he has uh, sort of uh, laid out the dohas in in hindi and we will go through some of those to give you a glimpse glimpse of those but essentially what you see here is a lot of wisdom which is boiled down and how it can be applied real life as far as uh, you know sort of your uh, investments managing money etc all of all of that is concerned uh, a quote which i thought was very apt uh, as far as Uh, benjamin graham was concerned and it says the investor's chief problem and even his worst enemy is likely be himself so in terms of how you approach uh, investment and that depends a lot on your temperament and potentially the return that you make out as far as your investments are concerned right and we will delve a little bit deeper into that and essentially uh, what it says is temperament of people leads to whether the outcome from an investment 
standpoint is whether you are a good investor or a bad investor. The delta between a bad investor and a good investor is more of a temperament rather than uh, anything else. And just to sort of take you back, when we are talking about investments, uh, some facts, Sensex was, and Sensex is essentially a gorge of the stock, you know, the stock market that we have in our country. So when I say Sensex, I'm talking about BAC Sensex here. Uh, was, the Sensex was at 100 in 1979, 100, right? And that's where the power of compounding comes to the fore. In 2023, it is, uh, those of you who follow investment would know it's 66,000 plus, right? So 6,600 X multiple in a span of whatever, 33 years, 43 years, right? 40, 43 years or so, right? So uh, I think it's the temperament that determines temperament, patience that determines into what your investments outcomes would, would be. And that is what is sort of amplified in this book. So it talks about, uh, you know, in terms of how one, it impacts investments and what has behavior to do with it. So that's the behavioral aspect from an investment standpoint. And uh, essentially, what Sapre very eloquently talks about is there are two ways of making money, right? Either, uh, you know, uh, means you make all the right calls and that always might not be within your control. Uh, or essentially, uh, you know, you make or commit less mistakes, and which is something that you control, right? So things that are within your control versus things which are not within your control. And uh, the book also identifies cognitive biases of investors and provides solution to uh, those to overcome those biases, right? So each one of us would have certain uh, cognitive biases which is shaped and influenced by you know, how the various experiences that we have undergone, how we have grown up, the influences that society, parents, friends, etc., have have on us. And many of these biases are pretty deep and well entrenched, right? So how do you overcome some of those biases? With that, what I would do is to actually read out some of the Dohas or the couplets. And uh, I might not have, you know, uh, as exact and as good pronunciation as Sapri himself has, but I'll try. The first one reads like this, Bud Murai Hari Mile. Har koi leo mudai, bar bar ke mud se bhed na baikunt jai. Right. So once again, I think the uh, sort of the skeptic in uh, sort of Kabir is coming out very strongly. And just from a history standpoint, uh, what essentially the way Sapre has interpreted this particular Doha of Kabir is essentially he has related it to herd mentality, and we have seen that many a times from an uh, investment standpoint, like, and just to refresh your memories, uh, if you think about the time of Harshad Mehta scam, or uh, essentially those of you who have been into investments, there was a time uh, closer to 1996 when you know there was uh, there was a time when plantation companies went about with sort of coming out with uh, fixed deposit, and then there was a te tech bubble in 1999-2000, right, where uh, essentially certain companies, and I'll give you a small anecdote. There was a company called Krishna software in which people were crazily investing and it was hitting sort of upper circuit every day and that upper circuit was determined as 20% as far as this company called Krishna software was concerned. And a classic example of herd mentality when the bubble burst and essentially it crashed, people found out that Krishna software was actually an organization into the manufacture of hosiery. It had nothing to do with software or IT or technology uh, and that's what so that's that's one example of uh, herd herd mentality, and uh, moving on to the next Doha, which is falling prey to tall claims, uh, and the Doha reads as Sache koi na patijay, jhute jag patiyai, gali gali gaurus fire, madira baithi bikai. So essentially, the essence of this is you see big lines in front of wine shops. That is very common as far as Bangalore is concerned. If you're you know, <laughs> moving around in weekends, you'll see the queues, people queuing up right on a Friday or a Saturday, right? But uh, if you have to sell milk, you have to go door to door to sell milk, right? So many often look at excitement as far as investments are concerned. And once again, Sapre very eloquently said, if you want excitement, go and do bungee jumping. Don't look at excitement. Make investment a process and a boring process, right? If you want uh, sort of excitement, go and do bungee jumping. But uh, look at investment as a process rather than uh, essentially, you know, uh, a place where 
you can sort of find uh, excitement. Uh, the last Doha that I want to read out, don't hire a yes man. Sadhu aisa chahiye, jaka, jaka pura mang, mang here means man, vipatti padhe chode nahi, chadhe chauguna rang. So someone who do, does not, who does not desert you during bad times, but essentially doubles up and quadruples up and be with you even during your worst times. That's essentially what the Doha means. So uh, the financial advisor that you have, you should have someone who is looking for essentially protecting you, is essentially has your in best interest in the mind, and to minimize essentially mistakes that you make or uh, you know, just from an emotion standpoint, many times investment becomes an emotional decision. So if you have a good advisor, the good adv the advisor can potentially uh, help you go through the right path and protect you in terms of not making mistakes and guide you essentially properly. Some of the key takeaways, and I wouldn't read it out. I know potentially I've bust my time already. Mohit gave me a piece of paper saying one minute left, right? Uh, so. Uh, I would encourage you to read this and sort of, once again, it's a beautiful way in terms of how, uh, you know, Vinayak has taken some of the learnings and has correlated in terms of how that those learnings from Rahim and Kabir can be used from a, you know, day-to-day -day investment standpoint and more importantly from a life philosophy standpoint, right? So uh, one wouldn't think about Doha's and, you know, spiritual learning and how one can use to create wealth, but I think there is a deeper intrinsic link, which is what he has emphasized and focused on as far as his journey is concerned. Thank you all.